Today I want to go over how I created a, a test environment within a production environment of VMware vSphere 5.1. You can do it uh, in earlier uh, versions of VMware, but again, um, I did it in 5.1. A um, couple key things I'll go over is, first thing I did is I created a new cluster um, called Test Lab. I wanted to keep some separation and, and um, avoid confusion. So what I went ahead and done is just created a new cluster, you know, by right clicking at the data center level and saying new cluster. Um, so I named it test lab. Uh, once that was created, um, I needed to get a host um, in that uh, new cluster. So um, I had my ESXi one that I um, removed all my production VMs off of uh, to my other VMs. I went ahead and right clicked it and said disconnect. Uh, once that was completed, uh, I dragged the disconnected ESXi host down to my newly created cluster called Test Lab. And once that was completed, uh, the host uh, resided there. Um, I went ahead and made some configuration changes. So um, I highlighted my host that now resides under the Test Lab cluster. Uh, went to the configuration tab, added a, a networking, and created a new switch called vSwitch3, just a new um, uh, switch without any physical adapters uh, associated with it. I'm going to have total physical or total separation from the rest of the production network, and that's how I'm achieving that. Um, once I did that, is um, I wanted to go ahead and do a V to V, a virtual to virtual clone of a couple of my production VMs. I uh, wanted to select the domain controller and the DNS server and also another workstation. So um, I did a V2V of my domain controller which is this W2K8 underscore R2 and also a workstation which is this W7 underscore 7. Um, once they were converted or I should say cloned over to my uh, new cluster, my test lab cluster under my ESXi1 host, um, I rename them by just right clicking and saying rename. That's just at the VM level. The computer name still uh, remains the same. So I right clicked it, renamed it, and just added the underscore lab. Again, I'm just trying to avoid any confusion um, since these are uh, named after uh, the uh, production servers. Again, just added this underscore lab to avoid any confusion. Uh, once those were uh, done um, and renamed, um, I just needed to change the configuration of the, uh, the network configuration. Um, they did not inherit any of the IP information, which is good. Um, I went ahead and created, um, you know, I just um, opened up my settings, my adapter settings, and um, changed or created a new subnet, uh, which is, for, for my purposes, is this uh, 192.168.8 subnet. Um, I gave the IP of my domain controller, the 8.10, um, and the DNS server, which is itself, is 8.10 as well. Um, I also changed the uh, network settings of my workstation um, and once those were complete um, I just wanted to do some tests so let's I want to see if I can ping by name uh, a computer name um, my uh, VM over here uh, this is the uh, workstation VM so I went ahead and um, pulled up a command prompt typed in ping and the computer's name we'll go ahead and uh, see if we can ping it by name and we can. Now I'm going to go over to that uh, workstation VM and see if uh, we can ping. Again, this is the IP of the domain controller, the DNS server. Um, we can ping that as well. Um, um, to see if you have uh, you know, total separation from the rest of your network, um, I'm going to ping the old IP address of, well it is, I say old, but it's of the the uh, production server, the uh, domain controller, uh, has the same name as my test uh, domain controller, but uh, again, different IP, but I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can ping IP. And as you see, 
uh, it does not hit any of the production side. I went through all of my IPs of the production VMs and was not able to hit any of them. So that's how I created my uh, test lab environment within my production environment.